In 2006, when I first arrived at Stanford, growth mindset interventions were really just starting. Yeah. In the last 10 years, things have been so exciting. There's been so much energy. Yes. So my students and I had done experiments showing that you could change mindset within that experimental session and see differences sometimes in challenge seeking, sometimes in persistence. Um, but then Josh Aronson ran with it and uh, with his colleagues, including Catherine Good, um, developed it into a true intervention. He was the one that created the mind. Um, it's like a muscle metaphor, at least incorporated it into his interventions. Uh, he was the one who introduced the idea to students that every time you learn something new or hard, uh, there are new connections or stronger connections formed in your brain. And um, we picked that up. Uh, Lisa Blackwell um, and I picked that up and uh, along with Callie Trisniewski and turned it into an eight session intervention for um, seventh graders, this transition to seventh grade, which we thought was so important. We will never forget the time in one of the sessions when the growth mindset was introduced, this um, boy said, looked up. This boy had always been cutting up, fooling around with his friends, but he shooed his friends away, sat down, looked up and said, you mean I don't have to be dumb? The teacher said this boy had been um, disruptive, didn't do homework, and now he just caught fire. And with many of his peers in the growth mindset group, uh, his achievement started going somewhere. It seems like roughly three innovations happened at about the same time. One was greater clarity about what the growth mindset message was. Mm -hmm. The brain is like a muscle, the neurons are forming stronger connections, mm -hmm. that the brain responds to deeper learning. It seems like that was cohering as a key message. Yeah. Another thing was the methods for internalization. Yes. That the field of social psychology clarified its contributions around how to share a, mem a memorable message with someone in a way that will stick. Yes. And it seems like Greg Walton and Jeff Cohen and others especially helped crystallize and clarify mm -hmm. that for the field. And the third was the advent of the internet and especially computers in all schools. Yes. Which that allowed us to even imagine mm -hmm. this kind of study. Um, how did that kind of come together? What was that like? And what, was the, what were the early phases of those kind of insights. Um, what was that like at the time? It was extremely exciting. I'm not sure we were aware, consciously aware, that all of this was coming together. Um, we were working so hard <laughs> <laughs> on all of us on making that happen. Um, I think we felt the excitement of it. Yeah. The idea that we could create a program that had these uh, vivid images and metaphors that students responded to. One content relevant insight that was added to the growth mindset treatment around 2010 was a shift from saying, if you try hard, you get smarter mm -hmm. to having a kind of trifecta of effort, appropriate help from others in the use of good strategies. Yes. So in 2009-10, we rewrote the treatment that became a precursor for the national mm -hmm. um, to have this effort plus strategies plus help from others. And we did lots of piloting and prototyping with community college developmental math students. And I think it was the first PERTS growth mindset trial was at a community college in Southern California. I remember how it cut the dropouts from right. developmental or remedial math dramatically. Right. 
from 20% to 9% in that mm -hmm. study. And that was the first time where I felt like we might be on to something that could have the potential for large scale. Yeah. They said, we want to do an intervention study without sending anyone to your school. And all we're going to do is train you on with a page or two. And then we just want to take your students to the computer lab. It was crazy. It's a, yeah, it, it was, was a crazy, crazy idea. It was crazy to think that, I think it was one session, right? That one was, yeah. One session in a computer lab could do anything for anybody. Right. Well, we learned pretty soon after broadening our research question is that actually psychologists, our training is not in school resources, mm -hmm. learning opportunities, pathways through educational circumstances, but there's actually a wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. in sociology specializing in exactly that. Yes. And we knew that we needed to build a team that took the best from sociology, especially sociology that focuses on inequalities and pathways through high school, and marry that with the yes. psychological intervention approach. Yes, and so the Mindset Scholars Network was formed that included economists, sociologists, all different kinds of psychologists. And we have learned so much from each other. I think, hope they've learned from us <laughs> as well. But all of this fed into the design of the national study. It was designed over years. So what we ended up with for the national study materials was two 30-minute sessions. Students go to the computer lab, they put on headphones, we shipped boxes of headphones to all the schools in the study. They engage with interactive, open-ended questions. They give us feedback on how to make the materials mm -hmm. better. They try to encourage and persuade future struggling students. They see dynamic images of the brain's neurons growing deeper connections. Mm -hmm. And they reflect on reasons for learning. Yes. And at the end, um, we ask them some questions and then they go away and we don't talk to them. It's kind of a crazy thing to test. It was only a reasonable thing to test because we had the encouraging history, evidence. Yeah. But still, we launched it in 2015 and we had no idea what to expect. Um, we closed our eyes, we held our breath for two years. <laughs> and waited for the districts to send in the data. Yeah. <laughs> And um, well, I, I think you did a lot of hard work around that. Yeah, yeah. We were tracking down data officers to yeah, send us data. Yeah, yeah. Um, and we finally um, had the data. We pre registered our analysis plan. We had tons of feedback. We tried to model open data and transparency mm -hmm. and hypothesis testing. And then just a few months ago, there's more than zero effects. <laughs> We find some really exciting results, and most importantly, we're learning how the treatment varies across yeah. contexts. Yeah. And um, now we're in this new phase because of this data set. And um, I think you and I have both said, we really feel like we're just beginning right now. We're just beginning. I've been at this work, loving it, enjoying it for decades and decades and decades. And I feel like it's just starting. Yeah. Um, well, I'm thrilled to see where the work heads and mm -hmm. what we're going to learn next. And um, it's been really fun to, uh, um, to be on this journey together. It's a tremendous adventure. Yeah.